More than 25 years after the SR-71 Blackbird left service, the U.S. is again chasing aircraft that cruise at hypersonic speeds instead of just hypersonic missiles. The most famous concept in that story is still Lockheed Martin's proposed SR-72 Son of Blackbird, which we have already covered in a separate video. If you want a deeper look at that program, you can find the link to our full SR-72 review in the description below. But in parallel, a different path is taking shape. Instead of turbine engines running on standard jet fuel, an Australian startup working with NASA, the US Defense Innovation Unit, and American industry is betting on hydrogen-fueled scramjets that could push reusable aircraft toward Mach 10 and beyond. So in today's video, we're breaking down this hydrogen-powered hypersonic path and the experimental aircraft that might take reusable jets into the Mach 10 era. Let's dive in. At the center of this story is Hypersonics, a Brisbane-based company focused on hydrogen-powered scramjet engines and small hypersonic vehicles. The idea is simple. A booster rocket launches the test vehicle to high altitude and hypersonic speed where the scramjet kicks in. Using the aircraft's forward motion to compress incoming air, the engine mixes it with hydrogen and sustains flight beyond Mach 5. Hydrogen is, of course, key to this approach. It has very high specific energy and burns efficiently in a scramjet. Hypersonics notes that hydrogen is an excellent aerospace fuel, producing water vapor instead of carbon dioxide and soot, useful for both defense and future civil applications. The company ties its work to Australia's broader green hydrogen ecosystem, but for defense customers, the key advantages are hydrogen's energy density, its cooling potential, and its ability to support repeated hypersonic flights. The hardware tying this together is the Spartan engine. It's a fixed geometry scramjet, fully 3D printed in high temperature alloys and designed to operate from about Mach 5 to Mach 12. With no moving parts in the flow path, it avoids the complexity of variable geometry designs and improves manufacturing repeatability, which is essential if you want fleets of test vehicles rather than one-off prototypes. Spartan powers Hypersonics' first small hypersonic aircraft, the DART AE. Depending on configuration, DART AE is about 3 meters long, weighs roughly 300 kilograms, and is built for Mach 7 flight over roughly 1,000 kilometers. Its fully 3D printed airframe allows integrated internal ducting and cooling structures that are difficult to achieve with traditional machining. Functionally, DART AE is an expendable technology demonstrator. It rides a sounding rocket or small solid booster to the upper atmosphere, lights Spartan at hypersonic speed, and provides a brief, instrumented window of sustained flight for data collection. The upcoming DART AE test from NASA's Wallops Flight Facility supports the U.S. Defense Innovation Unit's High Cat program, which aims to field commercial hypersonic aircraft as test beds for sensors, materials, and guidance systems. Hypersonics received the first prototype contract under HiCat, and DIU officials say the program reflects a shift toward treating hypersonics as an aircraft regime rather than solely a missile problem. For U.S. defense planners, that kind of reusable test platform is valuable because it shortens development cycles for hypersonic weapons and defensive systems without firing an operational missile every time. Beyond DART AE, Hypersonics is working on larger platforms that get closer to what most people think of when they hear hypersonic jet. One of these is VISR, an 8-meter reusable hypersonic aircraft that mounts four Spartan engines. Open sources describe VISR as an intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance testbed with a target speed range of roughly Mach 7 to Mach 10, a payload of about 100 kilograms, and a range around 2,500 kilometers. That combination starts to look less like a pure test article and more like a prototype for operational ISR and high-speed test missions. On the space access side, 
Hypersonics's Delta Velos concept pushes the same technology towards small satellite launch. Delta Velos is described as a multi-stage, scramjet-powered system intended to place roughly 50 kilograms of payload into orbit, with speed targets above Mach 10. In this architecture, reusable hypersonic stages could be launched frequently to provide responsive access to low Earth orbit, while still using hydrogen fuel and 3D printed engines. All of this sits inside a broader global race. China and Russia have focused heavily on boost glide vehicles and air-launched hypersonic missiles, while Western programs are split between weapons, aircraft, and space access. France's Destinus, Hyperion Aerospace in the US, and European Space Agency initiatives like Invictus are also exploring hydrogen-powered or high-speed air-breathing vehicles. Hypersonics is notable because it is already tied into US and UK defense work, including a UK Ministry of Defense contract related to hypersonic missile development. But there are still serious challenges. At Mach 10, leading edges and engine surfaces can see temperatures above 1,800 degrees Celsius, which pushes designers toward ceramic matrix composites and advanced thermal protection. Hydrogen storage is anything but simple. Cryogenic tanks, ground handling infrastructure, and safety protocols all add complexity, especially if you want high sortie rates. While Hypersonics' vehicles are unmanned, any future passenger variant would face an additional layer of regulatory and safety obstacles. For now, most analysts expect military testbeds and ISR platforms to mature first, with any commercial hypersonic transport coming much later, if at all. From a US and allied perspective, these demonstrators complement rather than replace projects like the SR-72. The SR-72 concept is built around a turbine-based combined cycle engine that can accelerate from the runway to around Mach 6 while burning conventional fuel. Hypersonics's approach trades that runway to Mach capability for a simpler hydrogen scramjet that only operates in the hypersonic regime using boosters to get up to speed, but it aims for higher top speeds and reusability in smaller platforms. For commanders and engineers, having both families of technology in play is useful. One line focuses on penetrating ISR and strike aircraft. The other focuses on test beds, ISR drones, and small launch systems that can be fielded more frequently. So, what do you think about this hydrogen scramjet path compared to concepts like the SR-72? Let us know in the comments below. And if you found this video insightful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the latest defense news and analysis.